Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training, I'm Matthew. In this video, we're going to look at how you would add a QR code reader to a Net2 system. The reader we're using is the ZK Techo QR600 reader. A standard, this reader obviously reads QR codes. It also does my fair. The primary function of this video though is adding a QR code reader to the system. So let's have a quick look at the electrical connections. It's a five wire connection, so you'd use a, a three pair cable. Um, red, black for power, red first. Gray for the LED control. We're gonna set this, per, set this up as an OEM reader. And then green and white for data one and data zero. So with the reader a standard out of the box, it's 34 bit, which Net2 does support, but we're gonna do it 26 bit. So to do that, we need to edit the reader. On the back of the reader, you will find in the bottom corner a small port where a USB plug can plug in and then you can admin the reader. So we're going to, first of all, admin the reader, change it to a Wigand 26-bit so it's compatible with Net2 and then we're going to run the Net2 software. So on the ZCO, ZK Techo website, zktechno.com, just search for the QR600, brings you to this page here. And what we can do, we can just scroll down and in the middle of the page there, we have a, a download tag. So let's click on that. And you can see the config demo software. Download that, save that to a location. I've saved it here to my desktop. So let's open that file. And in there, we'll find the um, application, the exe file. There it is, QR50 500 600 config demo. Double click. With the reader plugged in, click on connect. At the bottom there, it should say connect, connect successful. And then at the top, we have a pen for advanced settings. That brings you to the function selection. From here, we can read how the reader operates as it is. Um, we're interested in Wigand, so let's click on Wigand. Again, we'll need to read the configuration. You can see I've already got this set up as 26-bit uh, with a reverse output. It mirrors the image. Um, pulse width is 40 and the interval is 10. Now, this is fine for my generic setup, for the generic QR code I'm using. You may find you have to do some testing uh, to get the, the reader to work with certain QR codes. But as it is, this um, works quite well as a generic. So once I've applied 26 bit of chose 34, 66, but 26 bit in my case, then we're going to write that configuration to the reader. And that is then the reader configured. The reader is now ready to work in 26 bit mode. We're going to disconnect the USB lead and then connect the controller to the Net2 software. And then we can do some admin within uh, the Net2 environment. Okay, let's first of all, let's go to um, configuration utility and log in there. This is the Net2 configuration utility. You might find it in the um, application window. Uh, uh, you can see here, I've already got a, a Net2 controller, the TCIP node added. We need to go to the general window and in there we can change the LED behavior. Now, if you look there, we've got display reader as OEM style. So let's tick that and then the reader will now give an output. The LED output will go steady when a, a read is made. If you're familiar with Net2, the lights are always on, they go off. So it reverses it. So let's make that change. And then if we click apply on the software, we should be able to see here on the reader, the LED change. It's in green now blue, so it's in standby. So that effect has changed when a valid read is made that LED will go green. Okay, let's load the Net2 software now and log into that. Use a typical password. If you're not familiar with Net2, we have other videos on how to add Net2 and doors to it. So let's go to the door I'm working on. We should only have one door, so let's click on doors. There's a door, double click on it. And all we need to do is change the, the reader type. At the moment, it's none. So let's change that to Wigand. Uh, the keypad type is not used. It's 26-bit. The operating mode 
is inactive here. So let's change that from inactive to token only. Once we've made that change at the top there, click apply. And that's the controller now configured. And next we can go to users and add a user. Now I've generated a card already, uh, sorry, a QR code already. I've used the code of 8789, which is the ADI tech number. Um, so let's go and add a user to the system and then we can test it. I'm going to be pretty confident this is going to work straight away. So click on add user. Let's give it my name, uh, surname QR. Then the access levels, um, all hours, all doors, unless you've created your own. And then token number, 8789. I'm pretty confident this is going to work, so we're going to add and then close that. Now, if we go to the events log, we can see, as I test it, we should come through and can see that um, access was granted. So let's have a look at that. And there we go. The, the card was read, the relay beeped, and my token is now working. And that's it. The, the reader is configured and ready to go. Perhaps this installation that you're looking at is a site which is remote, where admin will be difficult. You, you maybe want to issue QR codes occasionally uh, to, to several people. So what you can do is you can add a, a bunch, a series of cards, uh, and generate codes and email them to people. And, you know, Net2 has got this usual feature of auto pin, where it can generate a four-digit pin automatically. You'd have to paste it into the token number field. But you create maybe 50 users, 20 users using that pin, go and convert it to a QR code. And then when you're ready to issue them to people, you can do. And the cards are always ready to work. Uh, you set them up in advance because until the token is issued, no one's going to use it. And there we are. That's how you would use a QR reader on the Net2 system using the QR600 from ZK Techo.